Attention comedy musicians and comedy music fans, the Logan Awards are taking open nominations for outstanding comedy songs and videos released last year for this year's awards. Did you release a comedy song or music video in 2022, or have a favorite comedy song or video that was released then? Then nominated for the Logan Awards today. The Logan Awards are essentially the Comedy Music Awards, sponsored annually by the Funny Music Project and are presented in three categories. Outstanding Original Comedy Song, Outstanding Parody Song, and Outstanding Comedy Music Video. If you have a comedy song that was released in 2022, that you'd like to nominate for 2023's awards, head to loganawards.com and click the nominations tab at the top. There is a minimum and maximum of five nominations per person. Hurry, nominations close this year on June 30th. For more details about Logan himself, the awards, and more, check out loganawards.com. Help us commemorate the year's best comedy songs and music videos with a trophy, the way they do with every other form of entertainment. But if you want your favorites to win, you have to nominate them by June 30th. Get your nominations in now at loganawards.com, brought to you by the Com. Greetings, Internet, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Musician Reacts. My name is Insaney, and I'm a comedy musician and comedy music fan, and on this show I react to comedy music from the perspective of a comedy musician. Because that's who I am, and that's what I do, and that's what this is, and that's why you're here. Maybe that's why you're here. Maybe you're just here because you like the stupendium. Whatever. Thanks for being here anyway. If it is your first time here, yes, I am a comedy musician, and I react to comedy music from the perspective of somebody who themselves does comedy music. And what that means is that I'm going to pause the video, kind of a lot actually, uh, mostly so that I don't talk over the jokes and miss them, but also so that I can discuss the song and react to it, because it's a reaction. And uh, sometimes that's describing the jokes, how they work, how the the joke is translated, how it works with the video, how things in the video work with the song, over-explaining jokes sometimes, and sometimes it's just me sitting back and laughing my damn head off. It's a crapshoot, whatever you're gonna get, but I think it's a good time either way. This week, I am reacting to Neath, a fallen London musical Mask of the Rose song by the Stupendium. If uh, you do like these sort of things, please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things to feed the algorithm to get more eyeballs onto these videos, and if you really want to help the channel out, consider supporting me on Patreon, where patrons get to see these videos early, get my music and, re and videos early, and all sorts of other cool things like that. Now, all of that out of the way, and of course, yes, hopefully you didn't skip the ad at the beginning about the Logan Awards, which are still taking nominations. If you have a favorite comedy song or music video that came out last year, 2022, everything's been going wrong today. The light has already gone out. We're rolling with it anyway. This video might be a little dark. Sorry. Uh, if you have a song, favorite song or video, comedy song, that came out last year, please go nominate it at loganawards.com. Anyway, all of that out of the way, let's dive into this. Fall in London is a series that I was not familiar with before today. I found out that the original Fall in London game was a web browser enabled RPG. Cool. And that they've had several spin offs or sequels or what have you. Uh, a Sunless Sky and a Sunless Sea, and now Mask of the Rose, which just came out. Now, the other ones are kind of RPG or tactical kind of games. Uh, and uh, Mask of the Rose isn't. Mask of the Rose is, from what I can tell from the trailer, a murder mystery dating sim set in the fallen London universe where uh, London collapsed into the underground uh, in Victorian era. Uh, so, you know, alternate history kind of thing. So uh, yeah, that game seems interesting. Uh, and uh, Stupendium has made a... A 12-minute song for them. Uh, I did read the description a little bit from Stoops' description for his video, for their video, and uh, it apparently only one of the characters in this song actually is from the games. Uh, the other characters that they play throughout it are original creations. Now I know you can kind of create your own personality in Mask of the Rose, so that's kind of why they did that for this, I believe. Uh, but this is really Stoops stretching their musical theater, theater muscles. And as a patron of the arts myself, uh, r raised in theater, did lots of straight theater and musical theater growing up, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, and straight theater meaning non-musical, not meaning not Happy Pride Month or whatever you want to think about it. Uh, obviously not meaning that. 
Uh, and so, yes, diving into this, this will be a good time. Uh, looking forward to this, let's just... It's enough of an intro. You think? I think. Let's just... Get, here's the thing you don't know about this. This video has taken me so many tries to get right, and then the, the light goes out, and I'm like, screw it, I'm just going to keep going, because I've tried this so much, it is now 11.30 at night, and I've been trying all day to get this video done. <laughs> we're doing it! We're, we're doing it live! Or not. Anyway. Subscrificate. Should one find this music content gratifactory, they would be wise to subscrificate for the continued informant of the Stupendium's future videonary endeavors. This video is sponsored by Fail Better Games. That's the company that made the, the games. Uh, those are unnecessarily wordy words. It's a thing that I've just made up. In February 1862, with no warning at all, London fell through the surface of the earth. And it faced a lot of bats, apparently. Musicum Audi Avis Comicate. Alright, I dig that. I, I think that's Latin for music and comedy. I may not be completely accurate on it, but that's my assumption. I took Latin in sixth grade, and at this point that is 30 years ago, so... <sighs> A Fallen London Musical. Neath. As in beneath. Read all about it! Read all about it! Biscuit rations to increase by decree of the master! <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Missing baby found in spiders Oh. Well, hello there, friend. That shiny badge tells me you're here with the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. Taking the census? <laughs> well, you've picked a spot, all right. There's no shortage of colourful characters here in the Neve, and they all pass through here at the Singing Mandrake. I love the musical theatre introduction into this. You've got your, your kind of whimsical in-universe character who's a narrator, but also not. Oh, it's just somebody selling papers. But no, he's going to be your, your narrator through this. They're going to be the person who tells you the the plot, so to speak, or, or, or kind of get you into the world of the Neath and the singing Mandrake as they're directing you into it. And uh, just the little musical undertones as they're speaking over it before they obviously burst into song. It's a very musical theater introduction. I dig it a lot. Let old Harry Teller show you about. Harry Teller, There's a fellow okay. up top by the name of Robert Rackett, but these days everyone calls him Honest Bob. He can talk for England. I should say you pay him a visit. Alright, well we're going up apparently. Nice to meet you, governor, what you wanna know? Trying to keep a track of numbers, now we're dumped here down below. Oh. Fine, come take a look, you'll see on an open book to read. Hidden cut there. Door shuts, then it opens again. Obviously putting a cut there to push through uh, as a, you know, a different take, making it easier to break up the uh, the filming so you're not just pushing through and he all automatically is, they're automatically in the middle of the room. It's not how that, just a little editing trick. It's fun. Something took the city, then this city really took to me. I'm not a crook or thief. I just do what I got to do. Black still got to eat. Beef is more than a bob or two in a ditch and a Beef is more than a bob or two. Uh, meaning it's... Beef still costs more than one or two cents, I guess. And it was a piece of bread with a fly on it, yeah. I'm getting really big Fagin from Oliver vibes here. You do what you have to do, you know. And beg, borrow, or steal. I'm not a thief, but uh, no, you're 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 a thief. Honest Bob. Generally, if you have the 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 nickname of Honest in your name, you tend to be anything but. But uh, yes, 
what I got to do. Blake's still got to eat. Beef is smaller than a bumper too. In a ditch and out the picture, London's withered in walls, which are far too steep a pitch to climb. But Steve just makes the tea leaf richer. But steep just makes the tea leaf richer, because you, you steep your tea, meaning the price is steep, but also you're steeping. Brilliant wordplay. Again, it's stupendium, so we come to expect this. To do. Black still got to eat. Beef is more than a bumper too. In a ditch and out the picture, London's with ridden walls, which are far too steep a pitch to climb. But Steve just makes the tea leaf richer. See it, did ya? Oh, it takes me back. Day long, any other than the cave, the day of wrath. As the monuments were toppled and the cobbles tried to jostle, and the skies above were gobbled by a raging plague of bats. That was a lot. Um, but it's setting the scene for the, for the Neath. And yes, I'd heard in the original Fallen London game, yeah, it's a lot of bats. You went underground, so caves, bats. Lots of bats. Stuck down in the neath, drowning in disease. They stick to your teeth, it's thick and viscous with the whispers in the breeze. Try to earn an honest love, but a pub is just a rubber, and a rubber's just a rubber to a tea. And that's brilliant. Try to earn an honest bob. Earn an honest cent, earn an honest coin, but Honest Bob is his name, and also Bob is just a Robert, and Robert, what did they say, Robert Rich or whatever it was, was his full name, Bob is the nickname of Robert, and Robert's just a robber to a T, because robber, that's a really clever line, Robert, without the T at the end, is robber. And robber to a T, meaning you're something to a T, means that you are that to its exact specifications. So, oh, you know, he's... It, it, that, that's him to a T. That is him exactly. It's an idiom. Um, so saying something, someone is something to a T, saying that, you know, that is them specifically, precisely, perfectly. And a robber to a T, but a Robert... Robert... It's, it's very... It's good, is what I'm saying. It's late. All right. Was it Max? We used to run a comfy shop. One half fell down the old, but still still sitting at the top. <laughs> okay. So his sh he 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 used to be an honest salesman. He used to run a shop, but the register, the till, is still in London above when everything fell. Okay. That's that's good too. Here's the thing. The last time Stupendium did a really long song uh, was, a, was a nine minute Muppet uh, a cipher. Uh, the, my video ended up being 50 minutes because I talk a lot and I pause a lot and this video, we're maybe like 11, 12 minutes in, it's gonna be the same thing. You've been warned. Uh, yeah, we're, we're barely two minutes into the song and 11 minutes into the video Shut Up Ian, available now on streaming services everywhere. Now the bark is out in charge, it's rather dark, they think they're bar, but every bark he turns to black as soon as all the lights are off. Really, really good use of light and dark and with the match and it kind of reminiscent of that one ERB where they did that, um, where just suddenly the lights go off but flicking it in so it's not like lit with anything else it's lit by the lit by the match looks really really good and also every market turns to black when they say that your uh, your market is in the black or your company is in the black that's what they want black is the good ink when they when they're writing up the reports you want to be in the black you want to be good because if you're in the red that means things are bad red is generally bad and you you know it's marked with red to notice that you know, we need to pump up those numbers and if you're in the black you're good that's why black friday is a thing they want the companies want to be in the black for the year make all their money in one day that's what black friday is uh, so yes having your market be in the black everything's in the black when there's no lights when all the lights are off it's a good line. The fellow saw the fellow shift in stock at Chasbury Avenue. Most coppers came a cropper, so they stopped the Let's Be Avenue. Random, but they random, but I have a crude of map box too. And since they took the side, the maps ain't off collected value. 
the the maps are kind of worthless because they've taken all the signs off the streets, so there's really they're not really collecting any value anymore. Really funny. Counting up the days to die, it's a solitary life. Can't help but thinking I should cut myself a wife. And Eliza, Nelly, Nancy, here to hold me tight. <laughs> Place loved ones here in this frame. Uh, that's that's very clever. And Eliza, Nelly, Nancy, here to hold me tight at night. Just the wordplay, always on point. I did not. Well, a lady's tight is fancy, but still cold. It was the price. <laughs> Yes, because you need the heat and the warmth, especially underground. Yeah. Wouldn't it be lovely? Getting more Fagin vibes. I think Wouldn't It Be Lovely is a... I think, God, I can't remember now. I, I was in Oliver when I was like five years old. It was like the first show I ever did. Um, and I don't think I've seen it recently, so I can't remember all the music from that show, but I feel like Wouldn't It Be Lovely is a song from Oliver. I think that's the title of a song or a line in a song somewhere. Uh, I might be misremembering, and I'm sure people will yell it at me in the comments, but I think that's the connection that I'm making there. And again, this is a very Fagin-like character, so... Yes. It was the price. I wouldn't it be lovely to find a counterpart. If I do anything, it would last fire in me. If I could cook and I could clean, but neath me hand a man could dream. Sell me soul, but I won't ever fence me heart. Nothing ever comes Sell my soul, but I won't ever fence my heart. Fencing meaning, uh, meaning selling. I'll sell my soul, but I won't sell my heart. Fencing is when you take it to somebody who buys things that are illegal to buy, so. There's a lot going on here because I, I guess this is the the chorus or the the linking between sections here. Uh, a lot of different live actors here, which is great. Um, doesn't mean a thing whose heights were wuthering. Wuthering Heights is a Elizabethan uh, era book, so tying into that, um, it's just a reference to that. Doesn't mean a thing, new sides were wuthering, don't have in the country, nouveau riche. Nouveau riche, meaning the new rich. Who you was with all land and went tumbling, doesn't matter squat to the real be. Okay, so yeah, so you may have been nouveau riche in the original London, but now that London has toppled down below, it doesn't matter who you used to be, it matters to who you'll, you'll, you're going to be. Neat. Now this here is one Miss Cassie Abisham. Life of the party and pulled a dance site more than pipes. Anybody who didn't lose everything still lost something during the fall. But I should say they might have found a good deal more than they left behind. This bringing back my idea that they are the narrator, this this newsie, uh, is the narrator of the story, bringing in another character, introducing it to the audience. Very musical theater, again. Um, so this next section might be a completely different song, might not be even the same meter or scan or, or even rhyme scheme as the previous song was. Um... It's it's just the way everything is tied together. It's stretching a lot of musical theater number uh, muscles and all condensing it into an 11 minute tune. Just killer. Now have a chat. Way up on the surface, Chapman and McLean, clerking for a firm of urban purely to provide for a wife I never liked, and every day was me to hide the other person's office servant that resided deep inside. Bravo on the costuming, on the sets, on the whole world that Stupendium has built here. That is Stupendium as Cassie as well. Stupendium is playing all the lead roles because they love to, they are usually the main performer in their songs. Uh, and uh, I, I had read in the introduction on Stupendium's, in the description on Stupendium's video, that they were playing a femme presenting character, uh, which, uh, if you haven't heard, um, it's been said on Twitter, and it's said in the description, Stupendium is gender-fluid, so this is appropriate for them to do. 
it's also I'm not saying that it would be inappropriate for anyone else to do, but you know, it's it, it's it's something that they wanted to do, and it's the first time they've done it on a video. So, uh, bravo to them. Uh, I, again, everything comes out in the performance here, and it's already masterful in its presentation, in its execution. Excellent work. Way up on the circus, Chapman and replied, clerking for a firm of vermin purely to provide for a wife. For a firm of vermin is just a great little line. It's just a tiny little rhyme scheme in the middle there, but I love that kind of line. On the circus, Chapman and replied, clerking for a firm of vermin purely to provide for a wife. I never liked it. Every day was me to hide the other person, so for certain that resided deep inside. Some make out an eye, but darling, why should I be the prim and proper office boy for every passerby? I give us a year, maybe two, if we're lucky that a few would perform a me and brave for Chapman to die. Clyde can take a back seat, Cassie's dead to try. Man, just the, the, the little rhythm throughout this song, I'm getting... I'm getting a little bit of Master of the House from Les Mis. Um, just, and it's also because it's a barmaid. So you're kind of giving that, that working in the same industry Master of the House vibe. So, you know, yeah, you, people who are, who are leasing a, a, a hostel or hotel or what have you, uh, and then somebody who's working uh, serving drinks. It's kind of like in the same industry, so we're getting the same vibes of the song, but also kind of the meter of the song kind of lends itself to that as well. Um, just really loving the tempo and the and the delivery in this song to kind of give Cassie's side of the story of weird loves happening, like the person upstairs was was cheating on their wife but trying to provide for so much going on, so much going on. I, I kind of want to go back a little more on this. The prim and proper office boy for every passerby. I give us a year, maybe two, if we're lucky that a few could perform a me and brave for trying to die. Clyde can take a back seat, Cassie's turned to try. Who could say on any day who gets the rain to enjoy the ride? When it comes to who I am, I wear the trousers or I don't. Oh, darling, won't you see that London that is best to gentrify? <laughs> Great lines. Uh, I want to take it back actually a little further than that to the other uh, bit. So let's just go start her verse over again. Way up on the surface, Chapman and replied, clerking for a firm of vermin purely to provide for a wife who never liked it. Every day was me to hide okay. the other person's office servant that resided deep inside. Okay, I, I, I misspoke about that when I said before. Clyde was providing for a wife who didn't like him, not for some that were cheating on. I misread that. Um, I was just so... Uh, entranced by the music itself that I kind of forgot to listen to the lyrics. Hey, it's a reaction. Sometimes I get multitasked and forget what I'm doing. It's good, though. Some make out an eye, but darling, why should I be the prim and proper office boy for every passerby? I give us a year, maybe two, if we're lucky that a few would perform a me and brave for trying to die. Clyde used to be Cassie. No, back, scratch that, reverse it. Cassie used to be Clyde. That's what, that's what I'm getting from this, this verse in the song now. Because I wasn't really listening to the lyrics until now. Sorry, guys, it's late. I'm, I've been trying to do this all day and my, bleh. Um, yeah, Clyde can take a back backseat, Cassie's turn to drive. Uh, the, per uh, the person I used to be wanted to die. So... Cassie, Clyde was, was who Cassie was before. Very interesting details through all of this. Very, very cool. Also, that brings back... Clerking for a firm of them purely to provide Take it too far back. I never liked it Every day was me to hide The other person saw for certain That resided deep inside Some make out an eye Darling, why should I be The prim and proper office boy for every... Why should I be the prim and proper office boy for every passerby? Some may cast an eye. Yeah, it flew over my head first. Every passerby, I give us a year, maybe two, if we're lucky that a few, but the former me embrace the champs. The former me embraced the champs to die. But now that London fell, I got a chance to be who I really want to be. Excellent. Happy Pride Month, y'all. Clyde can take a back seat, Cassie's dead to try Who can say on any day who gets the reins enjoy the ride? Who can say on any day who gets the reins enjoy the ride? Uh, does that mean sometimes Cassie presents mail? 
Who knows? Excellent. Excellent world building with this, too. When it comes to who I am, I wear the trousers or I don't. Oh, darling, won't you see that London Town is best to gentrify? I wear the trousers or I don't. It's best when it's degentrified, which is kind of a play on degenderfied uh, and gentrification of, of uh, area means in, you know something other things are moving in to kind of build a kind of a I, I'm bad at defining words uh, but, <laughs> but I think gentrification means uh, I'm not going to look it up I could totally live Google uh, but this video is gonna be long enough as it is um, <laughs> especially with me blabbing and laughing at myself uh, where basically something comes in and, and changes the neighborhood to one specific aesthetic. Um, that's what gentrification means, I think, at least in the terms of u normal usage with talking about neighborhoods. If I'm wrong, I'll hear about it in the comments. Whee! All right, moving on. I gave love a go, nothing short of woe. What's the sense of beating empty feelings stuck below? The high and mighty in the sky might find me widely in proprietors, but in a hole, well, how are they gonna know? Beautiful. I could have been... I was widely improprietous up in London, but down here in the caves, who's gonna know? Fallen London is down here now. Brilliant. Done with companionship, hassle it brings. Don't need the baggage, the strap to a ring. I'll take the packages, lay off the strings. Really good lines there. Uh, and, and I know, folks, you don't have to tell me in the comments, hitting the comma or the period advance, uh, moves it back and forth one frame, it doesn't for me. It doesn't work at all. Uh, so, doing it that way doesn't work. Done you with can, com, ugh, done with companionship happily. Don't need that back. Done with... Ugh, I can't. It's a new tongue. I just had it replaced. I lost it in the war. Uh, done with companionship, companionship, the hassle it brings, don't need the baggage that's strapped to a ring. Meaning, don't need the baggage, the emotional baggage that one would get when getting married. Strapped to a ring. Um, I'm married. I don't consider it baggage. Um, but, obviously, Cassie's a different person than me, uh, and feels that the, the being married would tie her down too much. Uh, so there's baggage attached to that. It's the strap to a ring. I'll take the- I'll take the packages, lay off the strings. That is possibly... Uh, a double entendre, an innuendo laced double entendre, meaning packages could be, you know, packages are delivered, wrapped in string sometimes, uh, be they Christmas gifts or sometimes in the post uh, bound with twine, uh, or also uh, packages meaning packages, lay off the strings, no strings attached. Also, with that double meaning there, meaning like, uh, I'll take the packages, I'll take your goodies, uh, but no strings attached, no th nothing to tie me down like a ring. Lay off the strings. The packages lay off the strings when they aren't attached, it's my favorite thing. There. When they aren't attached, it's my favorite thing. The, not just the line itself, meaning when there's no strings attached, I, I'm, it's my favorite thing in the world. I love it when there's no strings attached, meaning it just could be a one-night stand and it's a great thing for Cassie. But also, the way that line was sung was sung in the tune of These are a few of my favorite things. More musical theater shit. Love it. There are devils in the streets. What's an actor in the sheets? Either way, you'll be beneath, so take a fling. <laughs> Either way, you'll be beneath. This is the neath. What they call fallen London. Excellent. There's a sorry looking pantry in the kitchen on the brink, and I'm worried that they'll catch a taste of river in the drinks. <laughs> All the drinks are watered down, and back then the only water you could get was from the river, and since you're underground, that river is not too clean. Not a sausage from my magic, not the riddle of the sphinx. And I'm worried that they'll catch a taste of river in the drinks. Not, not a sausage from her madge, it's like the riddle of the sphinx. Her Maj, meaning Her Majesty, it's just a shortening of it. Uh, one could think there's a another meaning there. I'm not diving into that one. 
The sausage from her mad is like the riddle of a sphinx While she's out up in her palace is a king that never sings Hard to pay the rent to and plague with the nonsensical It's daily and acquaintance, it's a strange to be unmeasurable Who can blame a dame in situations unconventional The basement full of tentacles but waiting on a gentacle Wow. Amazing. Amazing group of lines there. Hard to pay the rent at all when played by the nonsensical. That's an amazing line just by itself. Um, yeah, because, you know, you've got other things to worry about now that you've fallen down into the caves. Hard to pay the rent when you're dealing with bats and tentacles and creatures with glowing eyes and RPG stuff. Hard to pay the rent at all and plague with a nonsensical It's daily and acquaintance, it's a strange to be unmeasurable Who can blame a dame in situations unconventional? The basement full of tentacles, but waiting on a gentacle Or ain't it better several to get me through the night? To place me on a pedestal and set to see me ride It pays to be quite flexible and truly who am I? To cater to convention and eschew these new delights If you came for documenting, check whatever box you like You've got pages full of questions, but I left my love behind They're praying for ascension, but this bird I came to fly It's a shame it took descent into the death to see the night Wow. Just some killer lines at the end there. Just that whole verse. Really, really majestic. And it, it that last line. You know, you know, they're playing they're praying for ascension, but this burning keen to fly. They're praying to go back up. But I much prefer it down here. I'm allowed to be who I want to be. They're praying for ascension, but this bird I came to fly. It's a, sh it's a shame it took descent into the depths to see the light. Man, such good lines. It's a shame it took descent into the depths to see the light. It, it, going into the caves, into the dark, you descended into the depths, but you saw the light, saw the, the, the light of, of realization. Love it. Shame it took descent into the depths to see the light. Nothing much of fun down here in London, trial on the Thames and Myers. Uh, not quite uh, enjoying that crusty bread there. Bravo. Uh, all out of the two characters we've seen so far, Cassie's is my favorite uh, song of the three that I think we're getting. At least I think that's what I read in the description. Uh, we'll find out the next one now. Yeah, you see that gentleman in the corner? Yeah, the fancy sort. That is a Mr. Byron Brimstone. Comes by on occasion, just watches folks, nary a word. But I'd wager your ministry get-up might just get his attention. Go and see if he'll indulge you. And of course, the, the text bits with the little symbol at the end is probably very reminiscent of how the game goes. I'm sorry, this, this is so dark over here. Uh, How quaint it is, are you the one they've sent to take a name? I'd say it if I could, but I might set the place aflame. Metaphorically, of course, you see, I've rather gained a fame. From carriages to Hannah's village, I've decayed remains. Brimstone is, is their name, and uh, I'm getting the feeling uh, that's, that's more than metaphorical. Getting a very devilish vibe. It's been 30 minutes, so of course that means my camera's overheating. This is amazing. It's like everything is telling me to, to, to stop doing stuff. <sighs> but we travel on, and if, it's, if it stops, then I'll figure things out. I'm a landed man of standing there, and in every club still standing From the Abbey to the Strand, you'll find my calendar demanding I'm a witch of high precision, and my manners are enchanting As befitting my position as a real and human man thing <laughs> I'm very busy, I'm always working on things I'm always attending events and things And you can tell that I'm a real person because of this It's, it's obviously very demanding of me, a real human man thing Yes 
more allusions to this might be Satan. Tell me, friend, have you heard the call to peep behind the veil? Tell me, friend, do you hear the shadows sing? Tell me, friend, do you think one day the demons might prevail? Tell me, friend, do you believe in such a thing? I love the very theatrical call and answer in that that whole verse there every line beginning with tell me friend like they're you know clearly speaking directly to the audience but the audience in this case has been introduced as somebody from the ministry but every line obviously going straight to the audience tell me friend you know uh, have you seen these things do you believe in these things do you know what's really going on are you aware of what's actually lurking it's a it's a theatrical device here to kind of like introduce like mm, this is something in the background and maybe it should be in the foreground kind of thing and it's it pulls you in and it pulled me in I dig this I'm an academic sport quite despite my fine palsy my friend you're not the only one compiling the report while the <laughs> others at my station may not share my fascination it's assured my occupation is the normal mortal sort again trying to reassure you that they are human. My occupation is the normal mortal sort. It's the same thing that normal mortals like you, clearly a human person, to do. I am... my skin suit is itchy. You're a fascinating species of which I am too, of course, but with souls that they completely, I could easily have it caught. In the sister stream of flickery, the underneath is rot. It's not beast that deep or bleak, but because of love you seem to squawk. Again, going back to the themes of love from the previous two songs. Uh, again, going to the theme of the game, Seeming like a dating sim. Yeah. I your eyes not newly open to this paradise you found this dark arcane arcade here in cave beneath the ground where death is but a wheel within a wheel spins ever round upon a mortal coin a spring the likes of we have never wound your Just man, these rhymes. <laughs> I can't I can't keep stopping and talking about them. There's just so much. Uh but they're really good. Is has it again, this is this is a thing I do far too often, is I get annoyed at how good it is because uh, it's it's great and it makes me uh, amazed that there are people with this kind of skill uh, and Stupendium always does this every time. I, there are other songs that I get annoyed with this kind of thing and it's not actual annoyance it's just that like it's almost jealousy but like you know not uh, I'm backing myself into a corner here, so I'm just going to continue. You're a cast of fools and bastards so disastrously inclined, yet far more entertaining than the vast lot of my kind. So feeble, weak, and plebeian, and yet you pique the mind. Companions are beneath me, or perhaps they're ill-defined. But you know the higher foes can tire of serving through. So that's, that's interesting, where it's like, companions are beneath me, or at least they're ill-defined. I don't need love, but love is not really a thing that is something that has been truly laid out for me as to what it truly is. Very cool. From above, judge your homes and little doldrum like a Let's jump back a little. Not of my kind, so feeble we can plead be in, and yet you pique the mind. Companions are beneath me, or perhaps they're ill-defined. But you know the higher foes get tired of serving from above. Judge your homes and little doldrum like a service spot of buzz. When it comes to bedding souls, I tend to keep things bottled up, but perchance it might be drilled to take a stroll amongst the rough. I think that line also might be a little bit of a double. When it comes to bearing souls, I tend to keep things bottled up. Now, that could mean when people bear their souls, they mean they, they tell everything about themselves. They, 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 they bear their soul, they, they explain everything about them, they, feel, they, they say everything that they're feeling, everything that they're thinking, everything that they're, that's conscientiously in their head, they bear their soul to someone. They're, they're spilling their guts, as they say, uh, to, to explain what's happening in their life or what's happening to them or what they're thinking about. They're burying their soul. Uh, keeping things bottled up, meaning they don't, people don't do that. I tend to keep things bottled up. I don't bear my soul. I don't spill my guts. I don't tell everything. I keep everything close to the vest. Um, I'm using a lot of idioms to explain idioms. I'm sorry. Uh, but also, since this seems to be some sort of demon or Satan or something, when it comes to bearing souls, I tend to keep things bottled up, can also mean that 
souls, like the actual soul of a human, instead of putting it out there, bearing it for all to see, I bottle up souls. That's maybe why those bottles are glowing. Uh, just for, you know, giving the illumination idea of this is a visual thing of something sp spiritual being in these bottles. Um, I don't remember in the description, one of these characters actually is from the game, and I think it might be Brimstone here. Uh, I don't recall, um, so if I'm wrong, I'll find out. Uh, but uh, I think Brimstone is an actual character from the game here. But uh, it, in either case, uh, interesting things are afoot. Or a demon. When it comes to bedding souls, they tend to keep things bottled up. But perchance it might be drill to take a stroll amongst the rough. Go <laughs> on, oh, along. Oh, this thing. Yep. There are some demon eyes. That's very thriller. Um, Every worried soul in this sorry old lost forgotten that we've all tomorrow stole dead and buried, but the dead are very much aware of it, and now we've paid an or it's all. So, Brimstone's song was short, and now we're gonna have all four characters that Stoops has played in this do uh, an ending number here, since we're we're at almost at the eight minute mark of a eleven minute song, uh, and. 12 minutes with credits here, apparently. Amazing. Glad we come to be, dab here underneath, dab will ever feel the sun upon our cheeks, never see another summer, but with one another, lots of kind of love or some relief. So yeah, we're all down here, we're all together, sometimes we find solace in that and sometimes we find more. Just, again, with, with the, the multiple people singing, it's another musical theater trope thing, and I, I feel like one day more might be happening here soon from Les Mis. I'm getting a lot of Les Mis vibes from it. <laughs> to hold me tightly. Someone to treat me rightly. Someone to come shun me on me on the bottom. With one to hold me closely. Nights mightn't be so lonely. Stranded, helpless in the dark and reaching for them. London town laid to rest underground, but yet. They're all looking off to the same end of the camera. Nobody's... They're not singing to each other, they're just singing out into the void. They, the camera never had one of those characters face a different direction. They were all facing the same way, meaning they're not singing to each other, they're just singing out into the ether. It's a filming technique. If you had them facing each other, which some people would be... Anyway, some people might interpret as singing to each other since they would be technically facing each other, just not in the same shot. Um, so, this is just more of a singing outwardly. Okay, so now we have a new character that I was not expecting, and they're using all the... Uh, large wordings of I can't um, it, their words are more than words they have lots of extra endings on them that don't actually belong it, it's it's Ed Norton's character from Glass Onion only worse saying words that they think have meaning but now just giving extra syllables to it to make it sound more important and elegant whatever I, I knew where I was going with that one. If you followed me on that journey, I appreciate it, but it, honestly, I know it doesn't make sense. Could they only see, said in destiny, death and broken dreams, hellish chemistry is there, apotheclism, spawns a clockanism, requisite me on their pathometry. Okay, so that's a, uh, a creature that I think I saw in the trailer, so maybe Brimstone wasn't it. Um, but, like... There's something brilliant about making up words or making up endings to words, because you can make anything rhyme that way by just making, futzing with the word to make it fit your rhyme scheme. It's a wonderful trick, like Dr. Seuss did it all the time, just making up things so that they rhyme with the previous line, just change it to how it sounds. It's it's great, but like, and yet at the same time, hunting for a heart to cherish, to cherish, and to be affectionate with. Cherish fashionate, it's a it's a portmanteau. It's a combination of two words. Um and kind of got that from the intro. 
uh, text. Could they only see serendestiny? Serendipity and destiny, maybe? Uh. Me, death and broken dreams, hellish chemistry is their apocalypse spawn. Their apocalypse spawns a clockanism. What? Apocalypse, meaning apocalypse and cataclysm, probably the falling of London, spawns a clockanism. A clock mechanism? I don't know what that one is. Uh, words. The beyond their fathom beyond their fathomometry, their fathoming, beyond their fathom ability. I no, I'm I. This verse is making my brain hurt. I'm trying to translate it, and some of them I cannot. Sorry, y'all. Gladoration. Gladness and adoration. All right. Heart stole or lacerated. Ouch. That might be the murder that's also involved in this storyline. Uh, stolen hearts, meaning, you know, love won or lost. Uh, or lacerated. Stabbed. <clears throat> Each tale told by the quill dipped to the pages. Writing quill, obviously. A masterful, uh, just entire whole section of song here just with all the wordplay that's hidden under double talk words. Yeah. Darker than the missing sun, meaning the sun in the sky. Uh, woof. Uh, that verse was deep and too deep for me to comprehend sometimes, I may have to go back and listen to the whole thing again. I'm not... This is already a 45 minute or longer video here. Uh... When you have to live your life in London You feel right alone with skies of grey Ever since the something took us under Well, the sky stone looks quite the same And we say your city stuck and sunken Nothing's will be done, so step in time Step in time? Mary Poppins. Maybe what you're finding for in London Might be more than what you left behind Ever now the sun's in down in London Not so much a nothing night in day Wonder what it was to down in slumbering Till it came to take the skies away Spangles have involuntary spelunking Involuntary spelunking Spelunking is when you go cave diving. Involuntary meaning you didn't want to go cave diving, but you suddenly were. Okay, that's a great way to define it. Friend, I should say you'd have filled a fair few forms tonight, and no mistake. Wow. The sun ought to be out soon. Not a will see the lights of it down here. Yeah, I was gonna say. Me? Oh, there's naught remarkable about Harry Teller worth noting down. Besides, I've been dead for a week. I feel all right now, though. <laughs> Watcha. <you>. You're up. <laughs> I've been dead a week, but I feel all right now. Uh, that's. Uh, very mighty python, actually. <laughs> Man. Read all about it. Read all about it. Biscuit rations to increase my decree of the past. Amazing. That was an incredible piece of work. Holy crap. And... Yep. 
there's Harry again. Hello again there, friend. Well, I can see you must be on the lookout for the next game in Failbetter's Fallen London universe. Ah, uh, yes, the air. Go up to Sun the Sea and Sun the Skies. <laughs> well, are you in luck? Because Mask of the Rose is that very game. And it's available now. A visual novel set in the iconic and mysterious Yes, that's right, it's a visual novel, that's why I figured dating sim. It's a marvelous romance filled with a hint of murder. Romance and murder. Take love for yourself or for your friends and help a murdered man find justice. Oh, and uh, watch out for the bats. Mask of the Rose is available now on PC, Mac, and Linux via Steam and GOG and on Nintendo Switch. It's on Switch. Well, I've got no idea what any of those words mean. <laughs> Ah, good, in-universe stuff. I don't know what it means what I'm saying about PC and Linux and Steam and Switch. Because we're in Elizabethan times. Not Elizabethan. What am I? Why am I saying Elizabethan? I said that earlier and that was probably wrong. I don't... I don't mean that. Or do I? I don't know anymore. I'm out of space and time on the camera. Everything is running out. It's 1862. <laughs> it's 1862, yes. Mask of the Rose available now. The stupendy and very grateful to <laughs> for their sponsorship. This is Mr. Tubes. Mr. Tubes. The Ministry of Content and Subscriptions thanks you for your observitude and hereforth provides a playlist of further eye morsels for your contemplation. Eye morsels for your contemplation. For your content contemplation. Wow. Ensure you have subscriptified, and then process with your commentation, likery, and the regenabulation of the bill. So much words. Likery. Commentation. Okay, we know what they mean. Follow this instructions, and it shall be most gratifactory. Farewell. That was incredible. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. This is a long video, and... Whoops. Camera overheated. Uh, luckily, it was at the end of all of this and not in the middle of it. So, uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Amazing piece of musical theater, all composed for a game. Very, very cool. Uh, if you liked this, please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things to feed the algorithm to get more eyeballs onto these videos. And if you really want to help the channel out, like these people over here, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where patrons get to see these videos early, get my music and videos early, name in the credits, all sorts of stuff like that. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Good night, everyone. So tired. Well, life is mighty fun when you're living on a farm. Got plenty of things to do, won't bring anybody harm. But if you're ever stuck, this will work just like a charm. As long as it's your things when they're reaching up your arms. See, 